We were going to release a video about Western Sahara today, but yesterday, as I'm sure most of you know, things got very scary. So let's talk about it. Trump has lost the power struggle. That much is now abundantly clear. On its own, that shouldn't be surprising. After all, the conservative movement has been in retreat for almost as long as it's existed. Take almost any issue which divided the left from the right decades ago, and you'll find that the country has moved to the left on that issue since then. Sometimes this is a good thing. It's great that conservatives lost the gay marriage debate. It's great they're losing the drug war. But overall, it would be very hard to argue that the conservatives losing to the left overall hasn't coincided with the state growing in size, in scope, in intrusiveness. So let me back up. What does this have to do with what happened yesterday? As the values of limited government have been steadily torn away, the Americans that these Republican Party types claim to represent have grown increasingly desperate. A function of that desperation was the fact that they set their hopes on Donald Trump in 2016, uh, despite the fact that his ideology was completely incoherent, despite the fact that you know he had many, many personal flaws. He presented himself as this energetic foe of advancing leftism. However, as yesterday's events have definitively shown, when it really matters, Trump can't even deliver on that. In case you missed it, yesterday, thousands of Trump supporters marched on the U.S. Capitol to protest the alleged voter fraud, which they believe led to Trump's defeat in the 2020 election. The protesters entered the Capitol building as Congress met to certify the results, and they were met with the teeth of the state as police shot and killed four unarmed protesters, injuring and arresting many others. One of those killed, 35-year-old Air Force veteran Ashley Babbitt, she was shot while trying to climb through a window inside the Capitol. Her final moments were captured on a very disturbing film. So what did Trump have to say as his supporters were gunned down by police at a rally he instigated? Why, back the blue, of course. Trump backs the cops when they murder George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. He backs the cops when they kill his own supporters. And I'm sure he'll back the cops when they come to your house to confiscate your firearms. I'm glad that Trump lost this election. Not because I think Biden will be better for freedom, but because I think this will clarify the nature of our situation. The state is a violent criminal gang working to tighten the noose around the throat of liberty. Conservatives cannot and will not prevent this. We're outnumbered, but we're not alone. Every honest person with a sincere love of freedom at heart must eventually reach this conclusion. It's time for libertarian resistance. Resistance does not mean grandstanding about how the sacred capital was defiled. The Capitol is a den of filth and corruption. If anything good came of this whole misadventure, it's that for a few minutes we got to see the tyrants who haunted, cowering in fear. They're not going to forget that anytime soon. And it's likely that the backlash will be substantial. The media has been quick to label this an insurrection, which means Congress is probably going to use it to justify something nasty, a punishment for their uppity subjects. Whatever that is, we need to meet it together. I wish none of this had happened. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Check out our two-part series on libertarian Leninism for some ideas about what might be done in these times. Let us know in the comments what you think of this situation. If you'd like to see more updates on current events like this, give the video a like, subscribe to Springtime of Nations, and turn on notifications. We'll be back with our regularly scheduled video on Monday. Until then... Peace to you and yours.